some of one and some of the other and, you know don't move it a whole lot in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most and merciful God, God we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against, against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what, what we have done and by what we have, have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy, mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, us, and lead us, so, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your, your ways to the, the glory of your, your holy name. name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore <coughs> forgive you all your sins in the name of the <coughs> Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We turn <clears throat> back then to page 18 in the front of your hymnal to the entroid for <clears throat> the first Sunday after Christmas. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And he will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty, Mighty God. God. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right arm and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. And we return then to the Kyrie on page 159. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, Lord, mercy. have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. And we turn to the collect back on page 18. Direct us, O Lord, in all Lord, our actions you by your gracious favor, and, and further us with your continual help that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in your name, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy receive eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading <clears throat> today. <coughs> Excuse me. Is from the hundred and eleventh Psalm. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. 
Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. <coughs> It's a tree. Mm. If you're allergic to it, it's real dry. That's the Christy already has hers out of the house because of camera. It's the tree, I know it. It makes my eyes look. Maybe it is. I love those things though. Uh, so let's try again. We're recording. Okay. Then from Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. I will tell of the kindness <clears throat> of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, Surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me, and so he became their savior. And all their distress, he too was distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them as of the days of old. So far, the beating of the word. And then... In 1 Corinthians, we hear these words. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who were perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling blocks to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. This is the word of our Lord. And from Luke, the second chapter, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of our Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the Lord required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, 
For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 